Hey guys, just before the video starts, a quick reminder that due to the changes to the YouTube Partnership Program, your subscriptions are going to be even more important than before. So if you appreciate or like the content, please subscribe to the channel. The faster we hit the 1000 subscribers, the faster I'll be able to deliver co continuous content to you guys. So now, let's move on to the video. Welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. I'm Rick, and today we're going to be reviewing the eBay Thermal Paste. By eBay Thermal Paste, I mean that huge 30 gram tube that you can get for about a dollar on eBay from China. It takes about a month to get to your place, but once you got it, you need to know if it's any good and how it measures up to the other thermal pastes out there. The good thing is that in my channel about a month ago, we compared 12 thermal pastes from uh, you know reputed manufacturers. And if you wanna see that video, it's up there in the corner. So since we already have a good baseline of 12 other thermal pastes to compare to, we'll be able to know, is this stuff any good? Should you even put it on your computer? Or is your whole th system gonna overheat by using you know, subpar thermal paste? And uh, spoilers ahead, it's actually not that bad. Other than the fact, like I said, that it takes about a month to get to you, it is not the worst thermal paste we've tested so far. And we're actually going to look at the other thermal pastes that it can compare to. Now, just so that you understand, because in my other video, if you do watch it, I did say that there was one other thermal paste that I bought from uh, China for uh, on, off of uh, AliExpress, I believe, for about a dollar or two. And that was the uh, Halzie uh, HY810. The reason it's different is this is actually from a manufacturer. They have a website. You can see the different thermal pastes they make. And the HY810 in the end ended up being one of a pretty good thermal paste in the top 50 per like in the top 50% of the thermal paste we went over. So this in the six best. And um, I don't put it in the same categories because for one, it's a couple of bucks, but the tube is, you know, a three gram tube, meaning that it actually compares to some actual brands out there. I mean, it is a little bit cheaper, but it's not, you know, crazily cheaper. This is a dollar for 30 grams, 10 times more than this, and it's half price, which is why this is really, I find, in a category of its own. And I was always wondering if this was garbage or not. Like, could you put this in your system? Or like I said, would it overheat? So without further ado, let's look at the numbers. Let's see where it is. So as you can see in the chart uh, on the screen, it's the same chart we used for our, ta our other 12 thermal pastes. You'll have the, uh, this thermal paste highlighted. Now it is called the ZP360 on the tube, but there is no manufacturer on it. So I called it the eBay ZP360 in the chart. And as you can see, it's in the lower half, but it's still not the worst thermal paste. It was 30, on my Ryzen 3, uh, test bench system. It's a Ryzen 3, by the way, overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz using 1.35 volts to hit that. So all my thermal paste were compared on the same test bench using the exact same cooler, which is the Be Quiet uh, Slim cooler. Uh, if you want to see it, uh, I have a review of that as well, which I'll pop up in the corner so you can see exactly which uh, CPU cooler I used, but the important thing for you guys to know is that they were all on the same basic platform test bench. So basically it was 30, de 30 degrees above delta temperature, which is actually, like I said, not the worst. And if we look at the other thermal pastes, the only thermal pastes that actually performed worse, meaning not even to it, but worse, were actually the Hull Azai HY 710, which is in my, so far, out of all the thermal paste I, I tested, even though it's not the worst performing, it's the one I would tell you to never buy because this stuff is, gets you dirty, gets all over your fingers, and it's almost impossible to clean off your CPU. And it actually performed better than the Arctic MX2, which is a very reputable brand. And it's actually odd because the Arctic MX4 is among some of the best performing thermal paste that we tested. It wasn't the best, but it was among the best. So there really is, uh, if I was Arctic, I would rev I would look at my MX2 formula and try to maybe, you know, chime it up a bit because if you're being beat out by the 99 cents eBay stuff, not a good sign. So overall, 
this isn't going to be a very long video because there's not much more to say. It works. It'll Your system won't blow up. Your system won't be overheat. So if you are building a lot of systems, you don't need the utmost performance out of your thermal paste. You just need something that works, has decent performance, and is cheap, and you can get a lot of. Go for it, guys. Uh, at the same time, I don't know if there are, you know, a hundred brands out there and if there is a big variance between one and the other, but the one I got worked fine and I wouldn't be scared putting it in my systems. It's not the one I personally will use because I have access to a lot of other thermal pastes, but if you're on a tight budget out there, you build a lot of systems or you buy used graphics cards and you refurb them, changing the thermal paste and whatnot. So you need a lot of thermal paste and you don't want a lot of investment because you're just flipping the cards or stuff like that. Uh, go for it, guys. You won't be disappointed. It works. It's not awful. And it's cheap. Uh, it's cheap as hell. The only thing is you got to wait about a month or two to actually get it in the mail. I ordered this one before Christmas. Got it last week. So you can do the calculations about a month and a half to get it. So I hope you guys were interested in the video. I hope this answers and you know, we found out that 99 cents on eBay isn't always total garbage. And as usual, I hope I'll see you guys in my next video.